everybody. Welcome to AWP. I am PK and I'm honored to be back before you all for another sermon. Happy Sunday. We release sermons on Sundays between 1230 and 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we are just excited to be sharing the word with you, feeding you during Bible study. So just some quick announcements. We have Bible study every Thursday, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, okay? And we have our sermons every Sunday, 12.30 to 1 p.m. is when we'll be dropping it. We also have our new Grow series, which will be dropping every Wednesday. There's no time frame for that, but it'll be dropped on Wednesday. We also have our small groups, okay? Amen? For men and for women. So if you're interested, please email us and my team members or my team leaders will get back to you in regards to space and opportunity okay and please if the ministry has blessed you please feel free to sow into the ministry god loves a cheerful giver so today we're going to be talking about the great stripping away of the title of this sermon is the stripping away of i want you to get your bible and i want you to turn to acts 9 saul's conversion amen all right when you have it say amen Acts 9, Saul's conversion, all right? So first we're going to get into prayer, and then after that we'll get into the word. So Father God, we just thank you for what you are doing today. We love you and we just honor you, Father God. We just thank you for this peace and this grace and this mercy and forgiveness that you have given to us. Lord, you didn't have to, but you did. Father God, we love you. Father God, we adore you. Father God, we just want to live out your truth. We want your will for our lives, Father God. We want the healing, Father God. We want your mighty touch, Father God. We want to hear and feel and sense your presence, Father God. And we thank you for all that you do in the body of Christ. We thank you for all that you're doing in the world, Father God, keeping us safe despite what's going on with the pandemic, Father God. We just thank you for this ministry. We pray over this word and we just ask you, Father God, to bless all of us as we come together in unity in the mighty name of Jesus. And in your mighty, precious name, Jesus, I say amen. Amen. All right. So Acts 9, right? Saul's conversion. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. The men traveling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound, but did not see anyone. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand into Damascus. For three days, he was blind and did not eat or drink anything. In Damascus, there was a disciple named Ananias. Ananias. The Lord called to him in a vision. Ananias. Yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. In a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. Lord, Ananias answered, I have heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your holy people in Jerusalem. And he has come here with authority from the chief priest to arrest all who call on your name. But the Lord said to Ananias, go, this man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it. Placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he could see again. He got up and was baptized, and after taking some food, he regained his strength. Father God, we thank you for the word for today. My, 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 my. So today, I want to touch on how some theologians, they, they, they tend to debate on, you know, Saul's conversion or the Apostle Paul's conversion. Um, today, you have some people who, who think there was like a literal name change. From, from Saul to Paul. And then you've got theologians who say, you know, listen, he, he was converted. He had a conversion experience. He had an experience, but his name didn't necessarily change. You know, uh, God saw it 
more befitting to change his name to Paul, a more modern name to fit the 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 um, context of his ministry or to uh, be able to minister effectively. So that's why his name was changed from Saul to Paul. But regardless, regardless of, of what theologians may debate about, regardless of what you and I might, might think about this, this conversion from Saul to Paul, uh, hallelujah, uh, Paul had an experience. Amen. Paul had an experience. He was living his life. He was going on about his business. He was doing what he thought God was calling him to do until God stopped him dead in his tracks and stripped him of his sight of his sight for three days. He did not eat, he did not drink, and he could not see for three days. So God had to strip him, stop him in his tracks and strip him, amen, to convert him, to convert him, to rebuild him for his perfect will in his life in order for, for Apostle Paul to fulfill the calling and the mandate and the purpose in his life. Paul had an experience. How many of you want an experience today? Apostle Paul, he had a, a Jesus experience. How many of you are waiting for a Jesus experience? Because I know that I am. See, today, God is doing a, a stripping away of. God is removing the things, not just from his children, but from the earth and from the body of Christ. Amen. From the body of Christ. Amen. Um, from, the, from the church that does not belong. God is doing a great stripping away of, of the things that do not fit the bill. Amen. And how many of you have been waiting for God to remove some things from your life? Hallelujah. Because I know I have. I know I have. God is, God is in the process of, of stripping, of stripping you, of stripping the church, of stripping the earth of the things that don't belong. And that's why we're seeing exposure. That's why we're seeing exposure. The hidden things have been coming to the light. Things that have been within have been coming outward. Take it to Hebrews. Amen. God cares about the internal, the internal you, not just the external. God cares about this, the heart. Amen. God cares about your salvation. But regardless of it, you are about to have a stripping away of. You are about to have a stripping away of in this time, in this season. And you have got to allow God to do it. You have got to allow God to do it because the Apostle Paul, he didn't stop the Lord. He didn't know what was happening. He didn't know what was coming. But he obliged. He obliged. He listened to the sound of the Lord's voice. And he did what was expected. Are you going to do what's expected? When this stripping away of happens to you. And you may lose some things. You may lose some friends. You may lose some opportunities. Some doors may close. You may actually not eat for three days. Whatever the stripping away consists of, which is between you and God. Will you honor God and stop dead in your tracks and let him strip away the things so you can go ahead and serve your purpose in the mighty name of Jesus? Or will you, or will you be disobedient? Because today in the world, we have a lot of disobedient people. We have a lot of disobedient children. We have a lot of Christians who call themselves devout. A lot of Christians who call themselves served or, or sold out for the Lord. But they're not living. They're not living in God's will. They're not living through God's commandments. They're not living a righteous life. They're living the way that they want to. You can't separate them from the world. You can't separate the Christians from the worldly folk. And I want to urge you, I want to, I want to implore you today to get into alignment. Let God strip you. Like I said, the, the Apostle Paul, he had an experience. And I know many of you right now, you're, you're having an experience where things are just not adding up. Things just don't make sense. You're losing things. You're losing people. You don't have the money. You don't have the finances. You don't know which way to turn. But, you're, but, 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 but God is saying, let him take care of it. Let him take care of it. It's all for naught. Sometimes he's got to remove and strip and that hurts for you to get in alignment, to go where God called you to go. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So yes, it might hurt. The stripping away of might hurt, but don't stop seeking God. Don't stop being obedient. Don't stop pressing forth in your purpose. Don't stop pressing forth in your Christian life. Don't stop worshiping God. Don't stop believing in our father. You've got to keep going as he continues to strip and remove the things and the people that don't belong in your life. And when we see here with Ananias, 
when he tried to, to you know, do, uh, throw dirt on Apostle Paul's name. And not that he was throwing dirt because actually it was true. But God, God came through for him. And how many of you out there, you've done some things? Amen. You didn't live the best life. You didn't make the, the best decisions. So people are saying, how could you be called? How could God use you? But just like how, how, how the Lord came through for Apostle Paul during his conversion, God is going to come through for you. When people try to throw dirt on your name, when people try to hold you accountable for your past mistakes, God is going to defend you. He is going to defend you. You don't have to do nothing but serve God. Say, I will serve my God. Hallelujah. How many of you are going to let God strip you? That's what happens when you allow God to strip you. That's what happens when you have that conversion. That's what happens when you have that Jesus experience. God will go before you. Amen. God will go before you, before the call, before the assignment, before the task, before that major uphill battle. God will go before you and make your path straight. But all you have to do is get in alignment and allow him to strip you and allow for the conversion. Wait for that experience. Wait for that Jesus experience. Because it's worth it. So it may hurt now. Because it hurt Paul. It hurt Apostle Paul. As he could not see. As he could not drink. As he could not eat. And I'm sure he couldn't sleep. But he kept his faith. And he kept going. And he did what the Lord said. And I want to encourage you. Despite how it looks. Despite the dirt that's thrown on you. Despite how narrow the path may look or despite the, the odds against you, keep going. Keep serving the Lord because the Lord is stripping away. And it may be uncomfortable. It may be uncomfortable because Lord knows I like my pocketbooks. I'm not going to lie. What is it today that, that you can get rid of? Whether it's a physical stripping or a mental stripping or a spiritual stripping or a materialistic stripping. What can you allow God to strip away from you in order to replace the old with the new? Because we see here, Paul's, Paul's old way of life was null and void. It was done. The path he was on, it was done and it was over with. The new path and the new way, once he was receptive and obedient, that took place instantly and he began to minister and preach and became the powerful apostle that he that we know him to be. How many of you are willing to do that? How many of you are willing to be stripped? How many of you are willing to have that conversion or that experience with Jesus where you are stripped away of the things that you love? It may hurt. It may hurt, but it's necessary. Hallelujah. It's necessary in the name of Jesus. It's necessary in this hour. God said he is looking for, for his chosen vessels to rise up and to build and to trust him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He is looking for us to allow him to strip us of comfort, of the things that are familiar, the things that we love the most to better serve him properly. God is a jealous God. God does not like when we idolize other things or other people. God wants all of us. Are you willing to give God all of you? Are you willing to give God all of you in order for you to give God glory, in order for him to use you to serve in your call, in your purpose, for the perfecting of his will in your life? Like I said, Apostle Paul, he had an, he had an experience. And I know many of you have had an experience, and I know many of you are having an experience now. And if you haven't, say, Lord, give me an experience. Jesus, give me an experience where you will change my name or you will convert me. You will, you will, you will give me that experience where I can, I can now get on the, the path that you want me on. I don't want the old way. I don't want what's back there. See, Apostle Paul had it made. He was smart. He was studious. He was obedient. He was an obedient Jewish man, notable, prominent educated and he left that behind to serve his God his Lord his Savior and are you willing to do the same are you willing to leave what's comfortable are you willing to to leave what feels good what 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 fits your desires in order to better serve the Lord to have a better relationship with the Lord to live out your will amen God's will in your life amen how many of you are willing to do that? Because I am. Think about it. 
God is stripping away the things, the things that we thought we needed, the things that no longer serve us. He is rebuilding us from the inside out. He is restoring what he wants to restore, destroying what he wants to destroy. He is stripping away. My God, my God, my God, he is stripping away the things that don't fit, that don't fit his will, that don't fit his bill. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I pray that this word has been impactful for you today. And I'm going to pray us out. And if you need prayer, please email us with your prayer requests. Amen. And if you feel led to give to the ministry, please do so because God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. So Father God, we just thank you for today's sermon. Father God, we thank you for allowing us to come together, Father God. We love you, Lord, and we pray for everybody who watches this video, Father God. We pray that they have immediate restoration and healing and an experience, Father God, like the Apostle Paul, an experience, Father God, to put them on the right track. Lord, we know that you're stripping away. We know that you're stripping away things that don't serve you, that don't fit in order to rebuild the right way. And we just pray, Father God, that we can get into alignment as you strip us, Father God in order to serve you effectively, in order to teach and preach effectively. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We serve you, Father God. We honor you, Father God, in spirit and in truth. And in your mighty name, Jesus, I say, amen. Amen, amen, amen. I love you guys, and I can't wait to see you next week. God bless.